I'm Shiva Mirla. Uh, I'm from the Cloud Native Engineering team at NVIDIA. Um, I've been focusing uh, on GPU operator for the last few years um, and mainly work, working on orchestration and uh, GPU orchestration in Kubernetes. Um, so we had a long journey um, uh, in terms of using operator pattern uh, to make it easy to consume GPUs in Kubernetes. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, how we um, how we went through this approach and the learnings we had uh, through this journey. To introduce. My name is Kevin Clues. Um, I'm on the same team as Shiva at NVIDIA. Um, and the, the, the way I always pitch the team that, that, that we have, what we do is we, we do everything that's necessary to enable GPU support in Kubernetes, in, in containers in Kubernetes. Um, and then we build all the tooling around that to make, to make using GPUs in this environment easier. Um, and so yeah, we're, the, the, the operator is our way to package all these things together and make it that much easier for you guys to take advantage of of all, this, of all of these things on Kubernetes. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so this is the outline for the talk today. Um, we're going to talk about why GPUs, um, so why GPUs have become so ubiquitous, and, and why um, GPUs in Kubernetes. Um, and also we'll walk through um, how the typical GPU software stack looks like, um, uh, what are the main um, operational pain points we have when enabling GPUs, um, GPU software stack, and then we'll um, uh, delve into uh, operator pattern, uh, how we have implemented GPU operator, and some of the technical details uh, of the GPU operator itself. And then we'll end with a demo and, and some of the, the lessons that we learned um, through this journey. Um, so why GPUs um, are so popular, right? Um, it, it's no surprise, um, given, the, given the massive um, computational power and, and given the, uh, the way we are, um, we took a giant leap in terms of computational capacity over the last decade, um, so they become um, so ubiquitous in, in, in Kubernetes um, to run AIML jobs, deep learning, um, even in the scientific research, um, so become so um, common everywhere. Um, and recently, we have announced uh, Blackwell, um, which, which took a giant leap in terms of uh, computational uh, capability. And, and Kubernetes, on the other hand, um, also over the last few years, have become a de facto standard uh, to run AIML jobs, um, be it in um, AIML, uh, deep learning, um, in the scientific fields, or data processing. So everywhere, Kubernetes have become a, a de facto standard because of its scalability, um, easy to scale your applications, um, because of its resiliency, um, right, and also um, uh, uh, the way to kind of uh, manage uh, these applications seamlessly. Um, so it's become so common uh, to use Kubernetes. So what do we need um, to, to enable GPUs in Kubernetes? So typically, uh, we start with a device driver. Any kind of GPU, we have uh, a device driver um, uh, to be installed on the host. Um, and we have uh, some sort of uh, hooks to enable with the container runtime because uh, sometimes we, we don't have the native support um, in, the, in the container runtime itself to kind of enable the GPUs. Um, so we need uh, these custom runtime handlers uh, to be installed on the host. Uh, we also have a, a Kubernetes standard device plugin. Um, so we have a co device plugin framework in Kubernetes uh, to, to kind of advertise GPUs, to kind of discover and advertise GPUs to, to the kubelet. And also, it's, it's common to have a GPU monitoring software. We want to monitor GPU performance. Um, so we want to um, get certain alerts in terms of they go, in cases when they go faulty. So it's also common to have a GPU monitoring um, stack. So this is a typical GPU software stack with, with any kind of GPU. Um, so what are the pain points um, uh, that the operational teams are, are seeing these days uh, when enabling the GPU stack? So we're going to talk about, um, at the high level, uh, these pain points. Uh, we have um, a heterogeneous uh, node software stack. Um, so I'll talk about uh, the challenges we're having in terms of managing this stack as we add newer GPUs into the cluster, or as, we add, uh, as we release newer versions of the drivers over a period of time, um, how it becomes a pain point um, to manage. Um, also, the driver configuration itself. Um, so most people um, install drivers on, on the OS itself. Um, they, they have to configure certain things on the driver, so I will walk through um, how that is painful today. 
And the most common thing that we are also hearing in this um, uh, in this conference is how to kind of efficiently use GPUs. It's it's most common um, to learn about um, how we can configure GPUs uh, to share among multiple workloads. Um, so again, that the configuration is a per node and also per GPU, um, and and also something that the operational teams have to manage um, over a period of time. And as I mentioned, uh, we do apply certain container runtime configuration. We have certain hooks to be placed on the host based on the runtime type. Um, so we have to configure, we have to reload the daemon. So there are certain things we need to, uh, we need to know. And also monitoring GPU health. Uh, um, so it's also there is no robust solution today to, to kind of monitor GPU health and take action. Um, that's also a common pain point. Whenever some GPU uh, becomes unhealthy, um, how do we monitor that and how do we kind of make sure that we don't schedule anything on, on that node. Um, so to, to delve more into um, the heterogeneous node software stack, um, typically uh, day zero, um, uh, we install uh, uh, operating system. So we have a GPU software stack, which, which I talked about, and a standard Kubernetes stack. Everything works fine. Initial setup um, works fine. And then we kept, keep adding more nodes uh, with maybe like a newer GPUs, uh, newer driver versions. Um, so these versions are constantly changing. Um, we have maybe it might be because of the performance improvements or it is because of the CVEs, um, right? So you kind of have to keep updating the drivers um, over a period of time. Um, so definitely we'll run into some sort of interoperability issues. So we'll run into uh, issues in terms of the container runtime hooks that we have, or the the driver and and, and the uh, the CUDA stack that you have uh, on the on the on the on the on the node itself. So we'll run into a different sort of interop issues. Also, there is a, a CPU uh, versus GPU stack. Um, so the, the the operational teams have to maintain. Uh, two different stacks, depending on if it's a GPU node or, or a CPU node, because they kind of build um, build drivers into the OS image itself, so they end up using uh, two different um, OS images. So when the, when the cluster uh, grows in size, um, so it, it becomes um, very common to see um, how challenging it is to manage it across different nodes and how it is how, how hard it is to configure uh, these things. Uh, when it comes to driver install, um, so we have various components in the driver. We have kernel mode components. We have user space components. Um, on the user space, we have multiple services to be launched, um, right? And also there are the CLI utilities to configure uh, parameters on, on the GPUs. Um, again, um, on a node by node basis, um, so depending on the the version of the driver they have, or depending on the type of GPUs they have. Um, so uh, the SRA teams might have configured a few things on these nodes. So again, it becomes challenging right, to kind of uh, keep track of all these things in the cluster. Um, another common thing is a per node GPU configuration. So uh, how we partition the GPUs um, in, on, in each of the node. Um, so you, you, can, you need to have some sort of a declarative mechanism to, to partition GPUs. Um, this is when, when, when done with the standalone tools, um, so that the admins have to keep track of um, uh, the config that is applied on each node, uh, right? The, the different settings that are applied on each of the GPUs, so they'll have to kind of keep track of uh, these things on each of the node. And some, sometimes these are not persistent, like every time the node reboots, uh, some of these are not persistent, so on every reboot, they, they'll have to have some sort of init scripts or service daemons, right, to, to apply the same changes uh, again. Um, when it comes to runtime configuration, um, we do have, um, as I said, we have a custom runtime hooks in place. Um, so we are kind of standardizing towards CDI, but we are still not yet uh, completely there. Um, so we still have to install certain hooks on the host based on the runtime type. Uh, for example, container D, we have to um, uh, modify the config file. We have to apply the runtime class configuration. Um, we have to reload the daemon. Right? So same thing with um, a Docker, a Docker daemon. Um, for uh, same thing with CRIO. Uh, so, uh, we also need to modify the default runtime itself. Um, uh, if um, users want to run mostly GPU jobs, so they can add NVIDIA as a default runtime, um, in, in which case, if they don't request a GPU, so we'll just fall back to the underlying, underlying runtime. Um, and also, um, reloading a runtime daemon is also a challenge, because whenever we apply these changes, we have to reload the daemon. Um, 
and with every new version, we might add some new configuration into the runtime class, right? So, so uh, that means how to keep track of uh, how these changes are um, are made in in the cluster. Uh, so this is something they have to they have to keep monitoring. Another pain point is is GPU health. Um, so we have a, a DCGM exporter. Uh, we have a standalone Helm chart to install DCGM exporter. Um, again, there is no lifecycle management, um, right? So the operational teams have to apply apply these changes. Uh, they'll have to set up service monitor, uh, so make sure that um, they're configured right with with Prometheus. So it's all manual process today, um, and and also um, there is no robust solution in terms of handling GPU errors. Uh, in case if there are GPU errors, um, how how we need to propagate these to the Kubernetes itself. Um, so how, how can we avoid uh, scheduling jobs onto these nodes? So there is no robust solution um, that is built um, for this as well. Uh, we have a, a Kubernetes device plugin, but again, we have like a very basic health checking in the device plugin just to make sure that we don't use those GPUs. Um, but on the, on the Kubernetes side, there is no easy way to kind of um, orchestrate um, and say that you can't schedule any jobs uh, on, on these nodes itself. Um, so with that, yeah, let's get into um, a Kubernetes operators. Um, so we started looking into, um, initially we had um, various ways to, uh, to kind of deploy GPU stack. Uh, we had standalone Helm charts. Um, we had OS native packaging, uh, right? It was everywhere. So, so a few years back, we started looking at to kind of create like a unified solution um, to have a common API to configure these things in Kubernetes. Um, so operators was, was an obvious choice. Um, uh, it, gives, it gives a common controller pattern where um, you kind of declaratively define uh, the config you need, and, and it goes and applies the desired state um, uh, to make sure the actual state uh, matches with the desired state. The control loop paradigm really worked great for us. We were able to bring all the software together and deploy this with, with the operator. Um, um, recently, with recent years, we have seen many cases where uh, there were a lot of interop issues between these components. So it, it's become so easy um, by configuring everything in, in a, in, with a single API. It becomes so easy to make sure that they stay consistent. Whenever we deploy these things, they stay consistent um, and don't break on upgrades. Um, how are they built? Um, so they're built uh, using uh, common tools like kubebuilder. Uh, we have operator framework. Uh, but just with a, a few handful commands, we can easily um, build operators. Um, uh, these tools uh, will help with uh, generating the initial scaffolding. Um, uh, uh, we can define an API. And also, it automatically generates all the manifests that is required to deploy in Kubernetes. Um, for OpenShift, uh, there is, again, like a lifecycle manager, operator lifecycle manager. Um, using operator framework, we can also generate all the manifests that are required to, to deploy them in, in OpenShift as well. Um, so why are they useful? So uh, today, we're going to uh, talk more into GPU operator, uh, how, how we have used this pattern right, um, and, 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 and solve these issues. Um, so to give an overview of a GPU operator, um, so we wanted to have a unified API to, to configure everything uh, in Kubernetes. Um, it gives a, a single pane of glass to, to kind of um, uh, ma configure and manage the lifecycle of all the components uh, that I talked about, um, starting with NVIDIA driver, container runtime, um, a device plugin, and, and the monitoring software. We also have some advanced components like MIG Manager um, deployed through GPU operator. So, um, it's, it's given a, a, as a single API uh, to kind of easily configure these things. Um, again, how we install uh, this in, in Kubernetes, um, we have a standard tooling um, a package manager called as Helm. Uh, with the, just with a single click install, we can, we can deploy a GPU operator. Um, and if you're using um, OLM, um, then we can deploy using operator SDK. Uh, we can easily spin up uh, GPU operator pods, and we can create a custom resource uh, which, will, uh, which will enable deploying all the, the operands that we have. Um, at the high level, this is the state machine. Um, the soon after install, uh, GPU operator pod comes up, um, right? And, and we also have a, a CRD called as a cluster policy, um, and also we have a CRD called as NVIDIA driver API. Um, so using these um, APIs, uh, users can define uh, what is the configuration that they need for the GPU stack. Uh, the operator comes up, um, so it, it kind of um, fetches, fetches the API config from, from cluster policy and NVIDIA driver. Um, 
So, but but not, not, nothing is deployed yet. Um, so we have a dependency um, on a bootstrap operator called as NFD. Um, so NFD is a node feature discovery operator, um, which is open source. And, and mainly, the functionality of NFD is to, to discover the hardware features on each of the node uh, and kind of enable other applications to, to detect them and, and run um, uh, uh, suitable ap applications on them. So NFD uh, enabled us to kind of seamlessly uh, uh, identify GPU nodes. Um, so it has a CRD called as a node features. Uh, and based on the node feature CRD, um, NFD, uh, NFD pods will kind of label saying this node has a GPU. And this is the architecture of the node. This is the kernel version of the node. Uh, there are like multiple properties of the, uh, of the server itself uh, that are labeled on the node uh, that the applications can use to, to schedule, uh, schedule onto those nodes. Um, so once the, once the NFD labeling is done, uh, so we can start with the bootstrap. Uh, GPU operator comes up, and, and we deploy the containerized driver uh, to start with. Um, so driver installation takes around like three to five minutes. So we have, uh, we currently support installing drivers uh, through, uh, through a run file, uh, which will dynamically compile um, and install. And also we have a pre-compiled uh, pre -compiled packages uh, supporting the driver containers as well. So depending on the type of uh, installation we use, uh, it takes about like uh, three to five minutes um, to, to bootstrap the driver on the node. And once the, the driver is uh, installed, uh, once the, the driver is loaded and all the libraries are installed, uh, we bring up Container Toolkit, uh, which is again our core service uh, to kind of uh, inject all the GPUs into application parts. So until the, the core services are, uh, have come up, uh, we can't really run anything else. So all the other parts, uh, we'll be waiting on these things to come up. It'll, uh, so if you see, as soon as uh, you install GPU operator, if you see um, most of the pods stuck in init state, it is uh, due to the reason that they're waiting for the driver install to complete. Um, so these things really order well uh, among themselves. Uh, so once the driver installation is done, once the container toolkit setup is complete, uh, that's when we uh, bring up the uh, rest of the stack. Uh, that includes the device plugin. Um, the GPU feature discovery, MIG manager, right, and also the, the rest of the monitoring stack. So all of the, the, the rest of the services will, uh, will come up. Um, and also we have validation built in uh, into the operator itself. At every stage, we, we perform like CUDA validation uh, and the plugin validation to make sure that the stack um, is completely functional. And finally, we mark the node as ready. Uh, so a bit more on NFD itself. So we have this uh, dependency on node labeling because we didn't want to build another controller to, to kind of manage node labels. Um, um, so it has uh, some APIs defined like node features and node feature rules uh, where users can come in and define custom rules and say, uh, if server have these properties, this is the label I want on the node. Um, and also it has certain standard labels, for example, certain standard PCI labels. Uh, in this case, it says, okay, it's NVIDIA GPU, and it labels the node with a NVIDIA vendor ID. So to talk more on the, the driver management itself, um, so the first thing we did is containerizing the driver. So we, have, we had this from a long time. We were using Docker containers to just do like a, a testing, mostly in the testing environments. Um, later, with the GPU operator, um, we have built the whole lifecycle components into, into the driver itself. So um, we install everything through the container. We bind mount the, onto the host path, right? So the rest of the components can use them. Um, and also, we built the whole lifecycle um, uh, aspect of, uh, of the driver itself. So we, we recently we built an uh, upgrade controller, uh, right? And we were also making progress um, in terms of uh, having a common upgrade controller between multiple operators. We we do have network operator which does uh, Mofed installs, Mofed driver installs, right? And we do GPU driver installs. We have like a synchronization between them uh, to to manage these things. Um, and typically, um, so we install everything to a con container. Um, the container comes up, and we can uh, exec into the container and, and do all the commands that, that typically uh, we do on the host with, with the drivers installed. So please refer to the talk uh, um, uh, done by my colleague yesterday um, about the, uh, if you want to learn more about the driver installation and how the upgrade uh, and all those things work. Um, so just to uh, give perspective of um, how we've been adding um, different features into, um, into the driver container itself, uh, over the past two to three years, um, we added significant features um, into, into these driver containers, making sure that we cover all the, the functionality that is supported by NVIDIA drivers. Um, 
So initially in 2021, we had basic driver installs, just compile and load the, the modules, bind mount on the host, nothing else. Uh, but we uh, uh, we added uh, the lifecycle components. Uh, we added uh, NVIDIA vGPU uh, driver support. Um, and later in 2022, we added uh, GPU direct RDMA uh, support, um, loading NVIDIA PRMM, uh, GDS drivers, GDR copy. Um, so we added complete support for uh, um, GPU direct technologies as well. Um, so other notable ones are uh, upgrade controller, advanced upgrade controller. Uh, you can listen to the talk um, again. Um, it, on this one. Um, and recently, the focus have been um, how we make it kind of easy to bootstrap the node. So we've been uh, looking into pre-compiled uh, drivers, um, how to use pre-compiled drivers across all the operating systems that we use. Um, so Canonical uh, builds pre-compiled packages for NVIDIA and publishes them. Um, so we, at least for, for Ubuntu, uh, we started publishing uh, pre-compiled uh, driver containers uh, with NGC, our NVIDIA container registry. Um, with, with certain uh, kernels and driver versions, we, 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 on a daily basis, we kind of build and publish these container images to, to NGC. Um, so again, uh, we are expanding pre-compiled drivers to other operating systems. Uh, we are looking at cloud, cloud uh, native, CSP native operating systems. We are looking at RHEL um, or CoreOS uh, to have these pre-compiled packages. Um, again, like heterogeneous drivers, um, right? This is one common use case. I want to run different drivers in the same cluster. I want to run different um, kernels in the same cluster or um, operating system versions in the same cluster. So, uh, or different drivers uh, types in, in the same cluster. So, we supported this um, as well. So, the currently, as I mentioned, the focus have been um, um, having pre-compiled dri drivers everywhere. Remove the dynamic dependencies that we have to install these drivers. Um, right? We don't have to pull any packages um, or build them. So the focus have been mainly to kind of enable pre-compiled drivers everywhere. And we are also looking into CSP native operating systems. Um, with this, I'll hand over to Kevin to talk about how the GPU configuration is done uh, on each node. Yeah, so in addition to all the you know, great features that the GPU operator gives you, in terms of driver management um, and so on. Um, one of the big things that you're able to do with the GPU operator is actually configure the ways that you want the individual GPUs um, to be set up by the time your workloads go to run on them. Um, and in particular, um, things you can do is uh, set up the different sharing strategies that I talked about uh, in the keynote on Wednesday. So being able to set up a set of MIG partitions on the GPU, being able to set up an MPF server to run um, and uh, you know, space partition your GPU in various ways, set up time slicing on these GPUs. Um, and one thing to note that at least with the current GPU operator and the way that um, it, it, it currently works with the, with the APIs that are available to it from Kubernetes, only the sysadmin has the ability to do this. So you have to kind of a priori decide, how do I want to divide my GPU up into different MIG devices? How do I want sharing set up by a time slicing and MPS? You have to drain the nodes. You have to apply these configuration settings. And once those are in place, a user workload can come along and consume them based on whatever the admin has decided is the, the right way to set this up on an individual node. Um, in the future, once we have uh, dynamic resource allocation uh, support, um, it won't be admin driven anymore. At the time that you create a claim to reference one of your, your GPUs, you can decide how you want this sharing set up. You can decide what configuration parameters you want on the GPU that you're going to be given access to. And so it kind of moves this ability to define what sharing settings you want on your GPU from the admin a priori to the just-in-time usage of the GPU when, you're, when you get access to it on your workload. Um, but at least in terms of how you use this today, uh, the diagrams here on the right show how an admin can come, come along and configure uh, a set of GPUs on a node uh, with, with a set of MIG devices. So the, the one on the top shows how you can uh, divide all of the GPUs into uh, what's called a 1G, 5GB device. And you can get seven of these on a single GPU, and you can advertise them as nvidia.com slash GPU. And um, if you request that, you'll get one of these MIG devices rather than a full GPU. Um, and this is what we call the single mode, because the, um, the GPU itself or sorry, the resource used to advertise this is the same as what you would have from a full GPU. So from an end user's perspective, he doesn't necessarily know or care that he's getting a MIG device or a GPU, so you might want to advertise it this way um, so that he doesn't have to change his, his pod spec when he's requesting these. On the flip side, you can set it up in something we call mixed mode, which allows you to um, change the name of the resource that you're actually trying to get access to, because you know that you exactly want one of these 1G, 5GB devices versus a 2G, 10GB uh, device and so on. 
Um, and so there's different you know, modes of operation that you, you as the admin can decide for how you want to share uh, these GPUs and how you want to set these things up. And the APIs will be very similar once we, we get with DRA, but as I said, you'll be able to do that as an end user as you request access to these GPUs rather than it having to be set up a priori and you just uh, grabbing uh, a, a reference to what's already there. Next slide. Um, and to enable all of this, as Shiva mentioned, we have uh, um, this, this component in the system called the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. And just like the, the driver that you need to install on your host that runs you know, in a containerized environment where you, you take the driver container, you run it on the host, it's going to um, install a, uh, a, kernel, um, a kernel module to represent the NVIDIA driver and as well install some, um, you know, the user space libraries inside the container itself and you mount that back onto the host. Um, similar thing happens with, uh, with our toolkit component. It's, it's a containerized installer of the in toolkit. So you run this container, and what it's going to do, and you see the, the, the three boxes on the, or the three cylinders on the right of the box, it's going to go through and back on the host install this, uh, this binary called uh, the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, which your container runtimes need to call out to in order to actually inject GPU support into a container. And that gets installed back on the host. It's going to expose some of these socket files you see here. And depending on the runtime that you actually have configured, it's also going to update those, uh, con the configuration files for those runtimes so that they know how to call out to this, this toolkit at the appropriate time. Um, and the GPU operator automates this entire process. So if we go from top to bottom on that list that you see there on the right, um, it first, first thing it does is it determines whether you have your driver installed directly on the host or if you've used our uh, GPU operator managed um, uh, driver installation process to use a driver container to it install. It detects which, you know, which mode of operation has been used to install your driver. Um, it then optionally updates the default runtime that you have in place. So you don't necessarily have to go via the toolkit in order to, um, to, to run every single container that you have on your system, whether it uses GPUs or not. If you don't want that set up as the default runtime, then you can say that you want to use this, time, this runtime for uh, uh, containers that want access to GPUs, but you don't have to make that the default. Um, and in order to enable this, you can, uh, it adds a runtime class spec so that you can reference specifically the runtime that's going to use um, GPUs versus not. Um, it also, once it updates the uh, configuration files for these runtimes, it will hook back into the system. And if you're using System D, it will, you know, restart System D, the System D unit rep that represents, um, say, Container D, uh, as an example. Um, and then it will, you know, do do a bunch of other stuff. Basically, to just get this toolkit up and running um, in order for GPU support to, to work inside your containers. Thanks, Kevin. Um, um, so let's also look at the uh, the diverse workloads um, right, that we support. Um, so typically, container workloads uh, injecting GPUs into containers. Uh, but recently, we have also seen. Um, Use cases uh, around like more around multi tenant use cases and also how to securely run um, certain AI ML applications. Um, so we've been looking at the the virtualization solutions like Kubeword and Kata. Uh, Kubeword, uh, it's been a few years now. We 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 had support for Kubeword. Uh, we support um, virtual GPUs. We support pass through GPUs. Um, right. Uh, we we have a very good solution uh, out there for Kubeword VMs. Um, Kata containers uh, currently we have in tech preview. Um, you, you can launch launch a Kata container with a pass through GPU, um, so that they be also documented and published uh, as a tech preview. Um, so GPU operator makes it so easy to kind of determine based on the workload type you want to run on each node. Uh, it automatically detects um, the software stack because each of these workloads need a different software stack, different kind of runtime, um, right? Different kind of plugins uh, for for these ones. So. So just by labeling the node, saying if you want to run a container workload, VM vGPU or VM pass through, we automatically bring up um, the, the necessary software stack. So again, refer to the talk uh, by my colleague uh, done yesterday on, um, uh, on the work we are doing with Kata containers and also confidential computing with this. So GPU monitoring. Um, I'll not go much into this one. So we, we do uh, deploy DCGM exporter. Um, we have DCGM engine built in, or we also support D launching DCGM as a separate container. Uh, we automate the lifecycle of the DCGM uh, component itself. We also create automatically service monitor. Um, and, and dynamically, you can also change the, the kind of metrics you want to collect using DCGM. 
Um, so we also have uh, metrics built into the operator. We, we have uh, operator level as well as operand level metrics. Uh, so you can easily, the SRA teams can easily monitor uh, if every component is functioning correctly um, or if the upgrades are in process, uh, right? You can see the, the progress of upgrades as well. Um, so we support a broader ecosystem, um, be it on-prem clusters or cloud providers. Um, we support various um, um, uh, cloud providers. Um, we also have uh, support for um, on-prem uh, Kubernetes variants, um, uh, container runtimes, uh, all the container runtimes, um, and, and, and operating systems we are, uh, we are adding more. Um, but currently, we are supporting mostly Ubuntu and CoreOS and RHEL, uh, and we are planning to add support for other operating systems soon. And, and yeah, please find the support matrix uh, at this link. Uh, troubleshooting, so, so we, we have a, um, a kind of script to kind of gather all the required um, uh, uh, logs uh, to troubleshoot any issues. So if you see any issues, um, use this command to, to get all the logs. Um, so let's go into the demo. Um, so we're going to show in this demo uh, yeah. So how to, uh, how to deploy the operator. Um, so uh, we're going to show how, to, how the driver gets deployed, how the device plugin gets deployed. Uh, and also we're going to show. Um, so currently, we are adding support for MPS. Uh, there is an, a, we are planning to release an RC version the, um, next week. Um, so we're going to have MPS support as well, but I'm going to show uh, in this demo. So um, in this demo, we're going to show how to install. Um, just with a, a simple Helm command, um, you can install GPU operator. Um, and once the GPU operator install is complete, uh, we can show how the different node labels are applied uh, right, to bring up um, the rest of the stack and how, how to do validation uh, to make sure that the driver is installed successfully. I'll skip through. So we can see uh, soon after the, the GP operator install, um, the, the NFD pods come up. Uh, they do add certain node labels saying, OK, this node has a GPU. Um, and based on that, the, the GP operator will, will bring up rest of the pods. So we can see the driver daemon set coming up, uh, the container toolkit coming up. Um, and we can see some of them in the init state. Um, so this is the ordering I, I was talking about. And the driver initializes. Um, once the driver initializes, um, so while it's taking place, we can see the different node labels that the GPU operator adds to control each of these. Um, so the device plugin, so once the device plugin comes up, we can see the allocatable GPUs on each of the node. Um, so currently it's still zero. The driver installation um, is complete. So we can see the allocatable GPU count um, increased. So each of them have one GPU. So one node has A100 GPU, and two nodes have L4 GPU. Um, um, so now we'll go into um, applying uh, different um, uh, GPU sharing uh, techniques. One is applying MIG. Um, so just by applying a MIG config uh, on the node, saying um, 1G, 10GB, uh, so I want all 1G, 10GB profiles, uh, we created seven MIG instances on this node. The MIG manager created seven MIG instances on this node. Um, and, and from the driver container, we can see all the MIG partitions on the GPU. And also, we apply um, custom um, con um, configuration for a time slicing so and also MPS. So we can define a custom configuration for device plugin to, to, um, to create MPS instances and also to create time slicing um, replicas. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, on, on the first node, I'm applying the MIG configuration. On the second node, I'm applying the time slicing co configuration. On the third node, we are doing MPS configuration. So we can see like different replicas uh, created for each of these. So we can see the first node has seven, instan seven uh, um, instances, MIG instances, and the second node has three replicas, and the third node has um, one replica, and we are configuring uh, MPS on the third node. So on the third node, we can see the MPS daemon coming up. Uh, MPS daemon comes up. 
um, and the device plugin, um, um, device plugin, and then the GFD will restart. Um, so soon we'll see how the allocatable GPUs increase from uh, from zero to uh, ten replicas uh, that we are applying for MPS. So we can see ten replicas on each of those nodes. As you remember, um, so there are like one GPU on in each of the node, and now with the time slicing um, and MPS, we have multiple replicas uh, for each of those nodes. So I'll go into running some workloads. Um, so for, with each of the, the time slicing, we run the workloads. I have a MIG, uh, MIG workloads. Um, so we launch some time slicing work, um, workloads and also and some with uh, MPS. So time slicing, uh, we're launching a job with three replicas. Um, So we can see three replicas coming up. Um, and similarly, with MPS, we launched 10 replicas. And uh, we can see uh, 10 replicas coming up for MPS. OK, with that. Um, We'll move on. Um, so some of the lessons learned um, throughout this journey of uh, developing operators is, is containerizing drivers is not easy. I mean, to, it's easy to get the driver installs done, but to manage the life cycle, um, it's, it's very challenging. So uh, we learned um, some of these challenges and built uh, updated uh, uh, advanced controllers to manage these drivers. And CRD management is another big issue. Um, as the versions change, as the API change, you kind of end up managing multiple versions of CRD. Um, and also with Helm, we also have challenges in terms of updating CRD. So we are learning through those. And we also had some, um, some features to kind of handle this in, in the operator. Uh, memory consumption is another issue. We are a cluster level operator, so uh, the, the client cache um, uh, gets huge. Um, we are looking into building a lead, um, using uh, watching selected um, um, resources so to, to make sure that we don't consume too much memory. And also, we have a dependency on node labels uh, that is NFD. Um, so, um, so, again, like we, are, we are looking into see how to make sure that NFD um, kind of don't bring down any of our components in case if it loses access to the API server. Uh, and here are the, the, the quickly uh, some of the upcoming features. Um, we are handling, uh, we are adding better health monitoring and reporting with the GPU operator. Um, we, we, uh, we are adding uh, support for Kata containers. I mentioned this is tech preview. This is going to be GA, um, and also we are adding confidential container support uh, that is going to be GA this year, um, and, and and more on the heterogeneous and and pre-compiled drivers. And DRA, uh, obviously, it's again a big topic uh, with this conference. Uh, DRA integration is another um, uh, main feature that we are looking to integrate with the GPU operator. Um, so these are the resources. So please, um, uh, if you have any feedback, um, uh, create an issue uh, or reach out. Um, so it's, we ha it's an open source project, so we can reach out um, or, or create an issue. Um, and this is the documentation uh, link. So yeah, please pro provide feedback um, and, and reach out to us. Questions? I have, I have a question about your plans for the future operating systems. Because in Germany, SUSE Linux is uh, used by a lot of companies. And it's also uh, the preferred operating system for SAP. Thank you. Thanks for the question. I think, yeah, this comes up a lot. Uh, we are looking into SUSE Linux. Uh, I think the main challenge we had is uh, supporting driver containers. Um, so we, do, we didn't have the, the base images, right, base images to kind of build and publish these. So what we did was um, so we, we do support users to build their own container images. We have a process. We have steps documented. So users can build their own uh, container images for driver and deploy through the GPU operator. So that part is uh, users can still run them. But officially, um, we are working through to see how we can publish and manage through NGC. So how to publish through NGC. So something we are looking into, yeah, we can, we can keep you posted. Is there a process, uh, uh, official process to apply, for SUSE to apply for, for this uh, build, uh, for this, that you built, the, or the, the build the images, or make them generally available? Um, 
I think our product managers are usually uh, going through the requirements. Uh, uh, maybe you can create an issue, GitHub issue, um, and, and we can definitely prioritize this. Um, if you have a, a, a good use case, right? a lot of customers are using SUSE, so we can definitely prioritize this. OK, thank you. Thank you. Hey, hi. Thanks for the demo and uh, session. Very useful. Um, you probably covered it, but I just wanted to understand a little bit more in terms of GPU management and for efficiency. Right? You uh, mentioned MPS, and you also demoed MPS, MIG, and uh, time slicing. But what, what was not very clear for me, at least, was when to use what? Um, is there like uh, scenarios or best practices as to what, what, what would be used when? Yeah, it, it depends a lot on your workload. Um, and we have a blog post that tries to help walk through why you might use one versus the other. Um, we didn't link the blog post in, in these slides, but if you uh, go to the keynote talk that I gave on Wednesday, I have a link at the bottom of one of the slides that should help you make this decision. There's a giant matrix of what advantages and disadvantages of the different approaches are, and it also the blog post itself talks about types of applications that could benefit from the different strategies. And if you still have questions, reach out to us afterwards, and we can try and help guide you based on your specific requirements. There's no, there's no one right answer, I guess, is the, the, the short answer. OK. We'll uh, take a look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi there. So over the side. <laughs> Um, if, if you're using uh, a, a managed uh, cloud provider for AK, something like AKS and you're selecting NVIDIA no pools, do people like Azure already manually install these drivers and then how will that work if I want to use the operator with some of the advantages that has? Just wonder if you could speak to that. Yeah, it's a great question. So we, we do support that kind of configuration. If you have, uh, typically, um, by, by default, if you're using Azure Linux, so they do have, sorry, Amazon Linux, they do have drivers pre-installed, container toolkit pre-installed. So we do support that kind of configuration. You can still take advantage of the MIG configuration or the MIG manager. Uh, the toolkit container that we have, you can still take care of all the, the advantage of those components. But what we are working with uh, with uh, AKS uh, or EKS uh, specifically, right, to add support for the, their native operating systems itself. In this case, Amazon Linux, we are looking to add support for Amazon Linux itself. So you can use the driver container instead of using a pre-installed uh, driver management. So that, that is in the in the works. So it's it's actually possible if if, it, if uh, Azure already add those drivers on, um, I can still put the operator on and then kind of use some of the things where you were labeling the nodes to say, uh, set this up to be MIG or set the, yes, and still yes. do that. Okay. Yeah, that is. A we have documented the, the process for that one. So we automatically detect that the driver is pre-installed, and we, we disable the driver container on those nodes. So yeah, we support that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yes, my first question is actually kind of the same. So if uh, pre-built images are already available in the cloud providers, apparently yes. Uh, so the second one. Um, you mentioned that uh, it's a problem for monitoring the GPU health. Uh, from your experience, what would be the main issues that would happen? Because from what I've seen, yep, if you have issues with your GPUs, your machine would not boot up or everything would freeze. Or well, Let me answer the first question. So um, in general, all of the operands that the GPU operator manages, you can decide if you want them to be managed by the operator or pre-installed on the system. So if you want to use the host manage, you, if you've installed your driver manually on the host and you don't want the operator to manage the driver lifecycle, you can turn off it using the driver container. If you've manually installed the NVIDIA container toolkit on your host, you can tell the operator you don't want it to install that because you've already done that step. Same thing with any of the other components. So there's, there's uh, options you can set when you deploy the Helm chart as to what you want on versus off when you deploy it. Um, and then the second question, maybe you, you can answer. Uh, in terms of error monitoring, um, that is true. We can't recover most of the time. But uh, currently, what is lacking today is uh, properly propagating those errors at the Kubernetes level, right? When, when I say Kubernetes level, uh, there is no indication at the node level saying if some GPU is unhealthy and what is the issue with the GPU. So what, what, what is happening today is the device plugin will detect these errors and make sure that that's not allocatable anymore. That's all. So you'll see. Um, the number of allocatable GPUs going down, but there is no indication in terms of which GPU has gone bad or what is the error with the GPU. So that's where we are improving, saying we'll propagate those as a node conditions and say that, OK, this is GPU has gone bad. 
um, and how to kind of recover those things, recover uh, that node. Yeah. It, it's also worth pointing out that we're internally right now trying to come up with a more comprehensive solution for not just GPU health, but node health in general. And the plan would be to eventually integrate this kind of node slash GPU health solution as an operand that the operator can deploy and people can make use of. We, we're still trying to figure out what that's going to look like, but that's the long-term plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, you mentioned uh, for GPU driver, you have containerized the driver. So can you explain a little bit between the native GPU driver and the containerized driver? Um, What's the uh, difference? Yeah. 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 So, um, so first off, there's, there was a talk yesterday. Um, he referenced it. Shiva referenced it in his slides here that goes into great detail what our uh, host operator, sorry, our, our GPU operator uh, managed driver looks like and how we manage the life cycle of it. But the, the main idea is that, you know, it's, it's kind of a misnomer. We call it a containerized driver, but it's really a driver installer wrapped inside of a container. And so what it does is when you run this container, it will install the driver, the kernel module into the host. It'll install the user space libraries into the container image that you have, but then it'll make that the, the root of that container's image uh, or the, the container that's running, it'll make that the root of that file system available back on the host so that from the host's perspective, he has a path to using that driver from anything that's running on the host directly. So it looks different from what you install directly on the host, only really by where the path to those user space libraries exist. OK. So that mean, does it mean NVIDIA will maintain this kind of two different uh, GPU driver version, and the user will have option to choose one of them? You can't have both installed at the same time. You either do a host install driver, or you use the driver container. You can't do them both at the same time. So either one, but both will be coexist. Uh, they both coexist. will be coexist as the project. It's the same, it's the same driver. Same so point. whether you're installing it directly on the host, and then you get it at the root file system where all these files are, or you install it in the container. Think of the container as just the, the OS where you're installing this now. It's the exact same driver that you're installing, though. It's just the method at which it's being made available to software on the host. I say, OK, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you mean in the, by the same project, if you mean same cluster. So then there's still possible to have some nodes uh, pre-installed driver. I, I, think what he, I think what he meant was, are we maintaining different drivers, whether it's containerized versus not? And it's the same driver at the it's end the of same, the day. Same driver. Yeah, same driver. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, thanks for your good talk. So uh, you mentioned Kata container in your talk. So I want to enhance our isolation. Uh, so I want to use it. But as far as I know, the Kata container is only support, uh, don't support, uh, doesn't support a March GPU or a vGPU, right? So do you have a plan to uh, improve the Kata container to support it? Definitely, it's in the plan. So this is in the roadmap to add support for multiple GPUs and also vGPUs. So, so I think the current uh, focus for us is to to take a single GPU pass through as a GA, right? And then the, the computational containers with a single GPU. So then eventually, or, 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 or this or next year, we plan, we'll plan to add vGPU and multi-GPU support. OK, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I think that's all the questions we have time for. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.